Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble, and that's me in red. It's Alex, and we'll be here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that there is Lori Thompson. Hello. This is the second time we've had to do this today because I had my microphone all the way over there. Uh, well, and, and think of that as it, was, it would have been a lousy opening. But Lori Thompson, of course, as you know, was my... Uh, my aide de camp in the radio show in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, it was one of those kind of things that wherever I would go, people would go, Where's Lori? Oh, like, well, that's They thought nice. we traveled together everywhere. You know? Yeah, we did. In fact, I've been having dreams, and the dreams I have with your involved, we're nearly always traveling. We're doing the radio show, but we're always traveling. And we're always getting into like little kerfuffles with people where we got to do some fast talking to get yeah, our way out. Yeah. But the reason why we're always traveling in your dreams is is that in real life, I don't think we ever really says, you know, saw much of each other outside really. of the we show. Not really. We go to lunch. Yeah, go to lunch. Occasionally there'd be a lunch or something, uh, you know. But, I mean, <laughs> basically, you spend four hours with somebody. Uh -huh. Usually a little more than that because of some prep. <laughs> yeah. Some prep and uh, <laughs> some after show stuff, but you spend maybe four or five hours a day with somebody. Why in the world would you hang out with them after that? Exactly. I mean, it was always pleasant when we did, but uh, our schedules were different too because we both were big uh, proponents of naps, I remember. Yeah. And and then I would, I would go home, have my nap, and then I would go walking around because I was the proverbial kid in a candy store in San Francisco. Yeah. Come from this tiny town, you know, in the Midwest, and then just have this wonderful cosmopolitan city. I would walk all over the town every day. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. But I, uh, you know, I would, I would then go home, get my nap. And then a parade of chicks would arrive at your door. Yeah, yeah. Well, well some, sometime I, I would meet somebody at the show that I took back. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a rare occasion, but I did. And then I missed, my, but then I missed my nap. I know, and that, that could throw you off. And, and by the way, you see, what happens is when you go on in the morning, you got to be there at 5 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Something ridiculous, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You've got to really um, uh, be uh, awake at, at 5 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning or 6.07, yeah. as I like to put it. <laughs> um, I can always tell, but depending on the intro you're using, you had Professor Longhair was one, and then you had a jazz one, I think by Lee Ratnauer or something, and then you had, you just had various opens, and I could tell by how long the intro played. Well, after, after the news, we could go to a song. That's true. And so I would call on my car phone, and I would say, I'm almost there, yes. play a song. In a God of Devita. I mean, people ask me, how early did you get there to prepare for the show? And I go, what? <laughs> Did that show ever what, sound what, prepared? What, I'll speak. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and, and I like to get, yeah, I mean, I like to wake up, but I do wake up really quickly. I mean, zero to 60 and 60 Really? You were that good? I'm, I'm, I, people always used to say to me at the station, the, the, the Han shows at the station, mm -hmm. your first hour sucks. <laughs> and I said, one but reason is I'm not awake. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's something I've always awakened real fast because my mom was kind of a, she cracked the whip if she came home and we weren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, act busy because she would she would give us something to do. Oh, really? And oh, yeah, that's why. And we had um, several ways to learn she was coming. We could hear her on the front porch yeah. and then we could hear her in this little foyer we had. Then we could hear her in the hall and then we knew that she was 
coming into where we were in the in the you know the uh, family room or kitchen, and we better have something to do. Well, you know something. I I've met your parents on a couple of occasions. You did, and, yeah. And I, they were wonderful people. You well, know, that's nice. Yeah, they. Yeah. they they were but, wonderful people, but they were my parents. No, you know, I, all, that's what I always said. People said, oh, your mother. What did you think of my mother, for instance? I loved her. See, you loved her, right? She was charming. She was just a doll. The yeah. woman was the biggest pain in the ass in my life. <laughs> well, you, and, you know, I and people would go, people would say exactly what you said, and I'd have to say, yeah, but she isn't your mother. Yeah. And when what well, the thing is when we're growing up, it's hard to not see them as parents if we would learn earlier on that they were going through their same struggles. I mean, they're you know at forty, mm -hmm. and you know we we just saw them as our parents, and it's like whoa, you're falling down on the job. And yet, if we'd seen them just as people going through their own hills and valleys and life decisions, it would have been a much more easy flow. Uh, my mother. My mother um, was, was, I'll tell you what the relationship was of her to me. Yeah. And you're an only child. Yeah. I'm an only child. So I, to begin with, I was smothered. Yeah. Just Full absolutely force. smothered. Yeah. <laughs> and who wants to be smothered? Nobody wants to did be you, smothered. Well, but, did you get everything you wanted, though? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I mean when it was when it was Christmas time or it was my birthday. I, I got all the toys, all right? Yes. And yes. when they wore out, they gave them away to charity because there was no, no brother or sister to get them. Or there were no clothes for me to hand down because when I grew right. out of them they threw them out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But um and Marjorie always goes to me, You are an only child and I went, Yeah, and your point is yeah. Are you jealous you that I was an only child? Because I was the oldest child, and I really am fascinated by the birth order and how it plays into people's lives and courses of life. Well, were you were where in the birth uh, in the? Cycle? I was the oldest. You were the oldest. And, oh. And you're the one they they experiment with. So yeah, you're the biggest. Parents, you're the big experiment. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And my parents, when I look back at some of the privileges they gave me, I'm amazed. But I was a good kid. I didn't really, um, I didn't really abuse those privileges. I mean, I didn't. I skipped school and I occasionally, but but I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't, you know, have sex randomly. I didn't have sex at all until I was 21. I, w I was I'm, 19. Yeah, we're late bloomers. Yeah. And I, I wanted did to. Did you catch up? By the way, did you catch up? <laughs> You know, um, it depends. It's all relative. Did you catch <laughs> up? I'm asking you because I certainly did. You did, yeah. But um, I don't think I really did. I mean, I yeah. might have had liaisons, but I didn't have relationships. Back to the birth order. So okay. now you're, you're, you're the oldest, so you kind of help raise the other ones. You do, exactly. And it really came into full flower. And when my mom got into real estate, I was in ninth grade. I had a little sister who was two little sisters, but one was four years younger than me. So we were in slightly different places. Mm -hmm. I knew a little more. I was a little more worldly. I was a teenager. But I didn't know the answers to some of these questions she would ask me that she would normally ask mom and dad. But my dad traveled with his job. He was a railroad engineer. And some they would do long turnarounds to St. Louis or wherever. Mm -hmm. But my, and then my mom just worked constantly. And so... Amy, my sister, would come to me with these questions like, you know, what are blowjobs? Are blowjobs? I mean, and I didn't know because I'd never experienced it myself. Now, I had gathered some, some intel. My, my answer to that would be, well, you don't exactly blow on them. Right. <laughs> How it got that. And, and, and quite frankly, a job is something that's a task. This isn't a task. Yeah, not you know, for you. So both those <laughs> terms really shouldn't be used. And, and together. And, and what yeah. is basically sucking a dick. Okay, let's put it that right. way. Call it what it is, in other words. Yeah. But uh, you would ask me these questions, and I, I would know, I would give her my best answer. But it was the answer of a 14-year-old who... And now, how, many years ahead, how many years behind was she? 
from you. She's four years younger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, not uh, a lot so, to d- not a lot in these days, like at your age, but but back then. It was that, a dick. You it, know, if you're if you're if you're fourteen and she's ten, there's an entirely different frame of reference. Exactly. Yeah. And I and she was a very smart, sharp, intuitive ten year old. She was she's always been her whole life. But still, you're fourteen, you know, people that you know are having sex. Your friends are having sex, some of them. And at ten, I don't think they were. So I was. I would try to boil that, give her the Reader's Digest of my experience with a moral spin, of course, and because uh, I wanted her to to be okay. But it was a responsibility that weighed rather heavily on me. And, now, and, did she have her first sexual encounter younger than you? No, it, she was in. Well, maybe. Yeah, no, she did. She was younger than I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, when she did it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. She, I think it was. I think it came in high school or college. Oh, yeah. really? In high school? Yeah. Uh, but she was still an uh, an earlier bloomer than I. But I was just. I kind of blew the stats away. I was really a late bloomer. Well, you know, and, I was I was a late bloomer because first of all, you had to find somebody to have sex with, yeah. <laughs> and that was the biggest <laughs> problem. You know, and most of them were in witness relocation at the time. And when it finally <laughs> happened for me, it was in the back seat of my 1939 Pontiac torpedo. Whoa, uh, torpedo! Yeah, probably uh, electric. Uh, car. Parked uh, in the woods right off of what is now the Marin County Civic Center. Ooh! And yeah. uh, I, I did it, but I didn't know whether I actually found it. So I had yeah. her come back and meet me at my home in San Anselmo uh, the next Monday. Uh, my parents, my yeah. parents were both at work, and so we consummated it there. And that's where, there. you know, I said, "Okay, this is maybe more like it should be." Instead of thinking, and I think I hit a crease, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was good that you, you know, gave it a second try to make sure. That's but correct. I would- See, I had gone with the same guy, and we, we were raised in the Pentecostal church. We couldn't even go to movies and dances for a long time. Were your and parents so, that strict about it? Because they didn't seem like parents that were strict. My mother was strict, but my dad, thank goodness for him, he was a voracious reader of like everything from the classics, from you know the, the Greek philosophers, to uh, Twain. He loved Twain. He mm-hmm. loved... Chesterton, he loved uh, Thoreau, and so he balanced out her zealotry. I think she was a zealot. Yeah. And uh, but she she walked the walk and talked. Now, the talk. you, did yeah. you go to Pentecostal church? I went to a Baptist church. You went. You didn't for, go to a Pentecostal. But I went to Pente- Pentecostal church. I went to a Baptist school rather for one mm. semester. Okay, but but and, Pentecostal church, what goes yeah. on there? I mean, they speak tongues and everything, don't they? <laughs> They do, but every Pentecostal congregation has its own personality. Some, that's a big emphasis. And, you know, I hate to say this, but looking at it as I did, it seemed to be in the poorer churches that the theatrics were more pronounced. Mm -hmm. In the more more educated congregations, that's not as prevalent. But yeah, speaking in tongues, which means that you are blessed by the Holy Spirit, and speak in something that would resemble gibberish. There was actually a term for it, but I can't remember what it was, Galagalia or something like that. There was, Yeah. I, I, I yeah. don't know what the term is, but I, I do remember there was a term associated with speaking in tongues. That yeah, was the language well, you were speaking. Yeah, and it's, the, it's based on Jesus descending in, in the form of a dove uh, at the, on the day of Pentecost, and there were a lot of people who were believers, so they were spiritually all of one a mind, but they couldn't talk to each other. And so the Spirit descended like a dove, and they were all able to speak in a heavenly language. And I think symbolically, but it seems literal, it's a way of committing yourself because you are the person. Did that's they do any of this healing crap? Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. I've never seen much in person, but I've seen long haul long haul healing, which is where you know someone is prayed for over months and their recovery seems to 
uh, seems to exceed the normal expectations. Uh -huh. And then my cousin was diagnosed with leukemia, and his teenage parents mm -hmm. drove all night to an Oral Roberts meeting. And by the time they left that meeting, uh, his fingernails were starting to harden, and he was showing immediate signs of recovery. So, and that's something he, he recovered from being healed. Oh yeah, oh he's he's now a chiropractor, quite hale and hearty. So in the question was, did he really have leukemia? Well, they, he was diagnosed. Well, but diagnosed is one thing. Did he really have leukemia? See. But, you know, with that begs the question. And uh, uh, for a lot of people, there, it's not for skeptics. Or at least it can be for skeptics who are ordinarily skeptic about most things. But for some reason, they'll feel the mm -hmm. touch of the Holy Spirit. And it will break through that skepticism in a way that is so personal and unique yeah. that it changes but their life. Was this childhood leukemia? That's what I mean. It was childhood, childhood leukemia. Childhood leukemia sometimes corrects it, itself later on. It yeah. does. Yeah. It does. Well, yeah. I see. I mean, the thing about healing that always bothered me was, of course, the fact that some people who were really sick didn't seek the proper guidance they should have sought out, and which were good we doctors. We were never... In my era of Pentecost, doctors were encouraged. Yeah. I mean, you could pray for healing, but go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. And... So, but I, and the thing is, faith is just a unique animal. I mean, it's just a very unique animal because uh, I think it was probably more the faith of those two teenage parents who thought their child was going to die at, within yeah. six months. He yeah. was given six months. And uh, they drove all night. And I think it was much more their faith that was the. That was the lesson of that. Yeah, but you know, sometimes these these healing things, they, they felt they got healed by the church and they didn't get healed and then they die because they didn't go to yeah. doctors, you know. Well, and the, the, the healings uh, or... I would hate to, to be a doctor who had told somebody, your kid has leukemia, and then they took him to one of these faith healers. Or, or, healings. And, and then they didn't go back to the doctor because their kid was healed. That would be bad news. Yeah. yeah. And and like uh, Sam Kinison, he was, since then, I think that there were a sincere, genuine... He was a kid preacher. Right. And, and he was inspired by Oral Roberts and on a more grassroots level by these fire and brimstone uh, preachers. Oh, I, I had, I had uh, Sam once. I said, give me a little sermon here, you know? And he went into it, and it was it was exactly what you hear on television from these guys screaming and yelling and, you know, screaming to the Lord. The thing is, what's interesting, are there, uh, maybe you can tell me more in Florida than I can here in New York, but to my knowledge, there aren't, outside of uh, Joel Osteen, who's another phony, yeah. you know. He's okay. For the, my well, yeah, but he's a phony. Um, they're all phonies. They're all grabbing money from people based on a myth. Okay. Well, see, ego. Yes, ego yeah. enters into it, and then these these people become these icons of spiritual. Yeah, but spiritual. outside of him, there aren't very many of those those preachers on TV anymore. At least it's here. now taken. It's the form. It's new age spiritualism, which like Marianne Williamson, and. Uh, that that is it, yeah. replaced, you know the the uh, it's softer edged. You know, I, I when I was looking into the Iowa caucuses this year, they said a, a major component in Iowa were the evangelicals. Uh, I, that is true. And, I and my question is, who exactly are the evangelicals? I mean. Do you get a do you get a membership card? I mean, how do you know you're an evangelical? Letter sweater with an E. Still have mine. <laughs> <laughs> but, this is why I love her. You know. <laughs> but the, you're right. But the evangelicals. I think that became a softer word because it was kind of embarrassing in college to say I was raised Pentecostal mm. or I was raised Assembly of God. Oh, so evangelical is <laughs> a better term. Yeah. Well, and you know who 
I love. Jim and Tammy, I'll always love. Oh, oh God, I love them. Oh, do yeah, I, did I love them? Because, you know, they made it they made it okay for Pentecostals to have some bucks. Because they did, there was a show. I of, thought um, those two there. people were so screwed. I loved them. I, but yeah. they were so screwed. You know, they said, we're building a, uh, um, a theme park, a, a religious theme park. Six Flags Send Overseas. me your money. And normally, yeah. if any of these guys said that, what they got were a couple of Ferris wheels, and that was it, you know? Yeah. They built an actual theme park. I mean... Yeah, and if they had taken care to connect with the SEC on what was required, but they were selling unsecured timeshares. They were doing that, and that, that yeah, was their... Yeah, and, and the other problem was they weren't, they weren't checking out their people. Money would come in literally in bills and there would be a counting room like you have in Las Vegas yeah. where they were counting all the money but people were then stuffing their pockets with the money and, yeah. and Jim and Tammy meanwhile didn't want any part of that they had other important things to do with their ministry and yeah. I felt that they got the uh, here's the really bad deal they got uh, do I have enough time to explain this uh, uh, Jerry Falwell always yes. had to go to Jim and Tammy because what they did in the early days is they got themselves a transponder on a satellite. Mm -hmm. And Sorry. they were able to send their shows out by satellite. So if, 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 like Falwell wanted to do it, they had to come to Jim Baker and buy time on his transponder. Yeah, and it galled and, him. And they, they galled him. They wanted the transponder. He and Jimmy swaggered and a couple of others all got together and figured out, how do we get this guy? How do we get his transponders? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. what they do is they created this whole situation that got them in trouble. And mm -hmm. what happened was Falwell went to Baker and said, I know you're in real trouble now. Sign over the transponders to me. Mm -hmm. And I will take care of them until you get all this taken care of, and then I'll give it back to you. Yeah, he no, never gave it back. This was his way of literally stealing it. Yeah, it was. It was a gentleman's agreement. I wouldn't get into any kind of gentleman's agreement with Jerry Falwell. Yeah. He's the last thing. But that's what really screwed them. These guys were, were jealous and wanted those transponders because they had a full network going. They had a great they had the, the regular show they did, and then they had the Tammy Tammy's Breakfast or something. Yeah. You know, the show, and then they had uh, some puppet shows, and uh, of course, they were puppeteers early on for, for I think, Jerry Falwell. Yeah, uh, I've, I've heard uh, with, Robert, yeah. Yeah, with uh, Susie Moppet, I think was yeah. the name of the doll, <laughs> which you gave me a Susie Moppet doll, and if you pull you. the string in her neck, she says, Jesus loves you, he really, really does, and it's Tammy <laughs> Faye's voice. I haven't. I still have it in uh, storage somewhere. You know. <laughs> and, yeah, and uh, you know, and they were. She was. She was. I think Jim and Tammy. They they split philosophies, and she became committed to their cause, which she did love people, and she just really. Well, I mean, tell. they were entertainers, is what I'm saying. This was yeah. their big thing when they were with Falwell. They did a puppet show. They were entertainers and first and foremost i loved watching that show yeah. <laughs> especially when you were stoned <laughs> well the best part was this kid they had that had no arms and no legs oh, no. not kevin not kevin kevin, kevin. He, and they in the in the uh, uh, amusement park they created kevin's house everything was no and escape. everybody could go see yeah everybody could go see kevin and his friends like the one arm girl the you know the kid with two heads or whatever and it was like come see our biblical freak show exactly <laughs> it was amazing yeah because yeah, the elements of fascination uh, to human beings don't change a whole lot I mean you can change the setting which was you know a Pentecost uh, Jesus setting and but those elements of entertainment are going to be good in the Jesus in the Jesus setting going to be good in Vegas yeah elements. yeah. But I mean, they were real entertainers, and I loved them. You you know that. You know, I used oh, to yeah. go home and watch them every day. I had a friend, a girlfriend, who had a satellite dish, and we just sit there as they would send down all the programs for the week. 
to oh, the stations okay. and watch them end on end, you know, over the wow. weekend. Yeah, I remember you. I was thinking about all your girlfriends, your mayor harem uh, over the well, years. Yeah. And you had some really cool um, girlfriends, ones, you know, that I, it would be fun to keep in touch with. Like, you had, do you remember at the Atlanta Olympics, an uh, old girlfriend of yours who was with somebody else? We went to dinner with her and her no bowl at a restaurant in Buckhead. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. She was, a, and, and she was a gem. I liked it. She was. Her name back. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time for this little segment of Lori and Alex, which is better than <laughs> Jim and Tammy, i got to tell you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll see you next week. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, that there, wait a minute, that there uh, uh, is Lori Thompson. <laughs> Bye, Lori. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah, I, you know, I can't say enough about Lori, you know. It hasn't already been said about Lori, so she's great to have here. You know, I, I can't seem to get my, my facial color correct, see? If I turn this off, what happens? Well, it doesn't change that much, does it? Huh? No. If I do this, there we go. How do you like that? Does that look natural? Does that look fairly natural? I guess it does. I'm not sure, but anyway, uh, we're 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 doing fine. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? I hope you had a nice uh, weekend. Uh, uh, did we? I don't know. I don't think we did, but uh, it doesn't matter anyway. Wait, wait. What is this? There's somebody here that I don't trust. It says Anders. Is that somebody I should know? Well, first of all, let me admit the people I do know. Uh, here comes Charlie Wallace, and here comes Alan. Uh, and um, yep. let me see here. Uh, do, do any of us know a person, uh, somebody named Anders? Anders, if you're somebody else that I should know, change to the way your name is here, and I'll, I'll let you on. Oh, wait a minute, I know what I can do. I can keep my face on the screen, and we'll just let Anders in and see if it's somebody we know, okay? And if it isn't, we'll just get rid of them, okay? Now, let's see here. Here comes uh, Anders. All right. Oh, and there. Uh, you've got to move your head into the frame. Or are you going to move your head into the frame? Are you? It looks like it's a woman, actually. No? And there, there we lost them. Oh, well. I tried. Okay, well, let's go to our uh, panel here. Who's here so far? Uh, Charlie Wallace, a, a good new week to you, although I saw you on Monday. Yep. And uh, hello to... Uh, freezing cold. The free, what is it in Texas right now? What's the temperature? Oh, it warmed up. It actually got above freezing for the first time since Sunday uh, at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Because right so, now here in New York, it's... Uh, oh, it's it's oh, it's twenty one degrees. <laughs> yeah, thirty seven. Okay, yeah, it was twenty two when I woke up this morning, which was about ten o'clock in the morning, and by noon it had peaked at uh, twenty four. <laughs> so you know, nothing much happening with that. How's the weather out in California, uh, Char Allen? I, I I'm doing good, thanks. Um, it's 53 degrees and clear. 53 degrees and clear, a heat wave. Yeah. 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 Because people are freezing all over the country. Jeez yeah. almighty, you know. Uh, they're really, uh, uh, in fact, here's something that's interesting. And maybe I, uh, Brian's going to call tonight. I should wait for him. Because people in this country, you know, a lot of them bought those Teslas which is, is, it sounds like a good idea, right? Electric cars. Yeah. Okay, they're running on a, a renewable energy. They're not using up much of the uh, atmosphere or whatever. They aren't polluting the air, that's for damn sure. And that's a wonderful idea, right? Well, there's something about batteries that we hadn't taken into account. When it gets this goddamn cold, they don't hold a charge. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, they say 
that in this weather, the efficiency of an electric battery, and for a car, goes down something like 61% or something like, some, some phenomenal wow. amount. Wow. And then when you go to the place to charge them, there's a long wait for the chargers because it takes longer to charge them in cold weather. Now, this is something they never talked about before. First time I'm hearing it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So they're having, and, but I'm right, Charlie, right? That batteries do not work at optimum proficiency at 20 degrees and below. Well, regular batteries don't, but, you know, they drive cars, regular gasoline-powered cars up in Fairbanks, Alaska at 50 below zero. So, I mean, batteries are working somehow. Well, um, maybe they're not. Are they, are they, do they have many uh, Teslas up there, for instance? No, I'm just saying a regular gas-powered car has a battery. Oh, it has a battery, yes, yes. I mean, that battery seems to work even right. in 50 degrees. But, but it's, not, it's not, and I will add this to the discussion, a lithium-ion battery like the ones that are in cars. It'll work well in the cold, yeah. Yeah, it's lithium-ion, so... Anyway, we can laugh at all those people who bought electric automobiles, okay? You're stranded out there in the cold weather, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I saw a guy, he was, he was, he had been waiting in line, and then he charged it, and it took him like double the time it normally took to charge it, and then when he charged it, he only got up to about 41% efficiency, <laughs> and then he, he, the last thing was, they took a shot of him talking to his wife in the car and saying, I think I'm going back to gas. <laughs> yeah. um, do you know about this, um, uh, Kevin? Yeah, that's the that, same with the heat too. Does it, it degrades yeah. them in the heat as well? Oh, well, that's I mostly lead that. acid batteries. Yeah. Um, the, the the ion lithium ions. I don't think they're affected as badly. But no, they, they, they do say get that the that they the do get affected. That the yeah. Tesla batteries in these temperatures, <laughs> especially below twenty degrees, which yeah. is not uncommon oh. right now. Yeah. Right. It, it presents a real problem. So. Right. You know. Yep. So. Um, yep. Yeah. So how you yeah, doing? Especially you know Arizona. I know the batteries don't last for beans. And you, you know AAA. When we went to pick up my father uh, father in law's car when he passed away, his battery had been sitting in the car for I don't know, probably six months, and oh. it was trashed, and the guy from AAA just came and said, nah, I'm not even going to try and work this out. Yeah. I'll just give you a warranty battery, put a new one in. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they just don't last but two or three years. They're supposed to be five-year batteries. Yeah, well. Uh, but they, again, those are lead-acid and AGM batteries. But for all you people who have gas, you can look at those Teslas and kind of laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, as you zoom down the road past them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the batteries, a lot of the regular batteries in, in gas vehicles are lithium ion too. Now they're starting to make lithium batteries for those, and you know the sealed gel type batteries. And so it you know, doesn't well, make the, much difference. Yeah. Why not? Why not just build a heater that is a, a charged by the batteries and keep the batteries at a certain temperature always. You can buy a little blanket that goes around it. I'm yeah, sure. a blanket or something, something that heats. Keep, That's not a bad idea. Yeah. And I'm sure it's going to be offered by Tesla any day now. Well, the thing with Tesla is uh, our good friend Elon Musk, who keeps changing his mind every other day, um, once said, I will never use hydrogen in my cars. Yeah. Guess what he's putting out now? He's putting out a hydrogen version of the Tesla. Yeah, yeah there's one on display in downtown Fremont. Hydrogen's going to be the way it goes, I think, because that's that's a better... I think that's a better, better solution. Now, how expensive is hydrogen to use? I know it, it's basically it's water, right? Well, well it turns very, it in, it vaporizes to water. Yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. expensive because it takes a lot of energy to split the hydrogen off from the oxygen. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. But it there can are be some done. hydrogen cars. There are a couple gas stations in Fremont. It's yeah, we used hydrogen. to we filled them and we build the we used to build them where I worked and there's a mm. bunch of them in L.A. area. We well, a I, bunch I, of them. those are uh, um, uh, uh, co-op with Toyota and Honda, I believe that we yeah. did with uh, those yeah. two companies that 
I even did an experimental run when I was working there back in 2012, I think, when they were first coming out. And we did a run from, I think it was San Francisco down to Long Beach. And I had to take uh, what we called six packs. There were six cylinders tied together and with mm -hmm. a manifold. Yeah. And I took about 12, you know, not 12, it was one, two, three, four, about eight six packs and put them on the back of a truck. And I sat down on Highway 1 and waited for them to come along. And we gave them a boost there and shot them down the freeway. Supposedly, and correct me if I'm wrong, the original Teslas, really the, ba the uh, ba battery was just a series of what we would call the batteries we use in in uh, electronics now, all tied together. Well, yeah, that's yeah. essentially yeah, what they, they are. They still are. They still are? Pretty much yeah. what they are. If you tore them yeah. apart, that's probably what they well, are. Well, can't you make yeah. just one big battery that does it? I mean, why do you have to have, uh, why do you have to glue together a bunch of Everettis, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the way that they get recycled or whatever when they're done. I don't know. And plus, they're lithium-ion batteries. These things explode. Exactly. And are Teslas exploding? Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, you know, but, you know the fire department, wreck. Hmm? fire department in the Bay Area were trained by Tesla. Some yeah. of the first ones on how to, you know, a, a car gets in an accident. And apparently water puts out the fire. And I didn't think water though. puts out most fires, doesn't it? Right, and and but fire trucks carry a lot of water. They were I, concerned that they needed to use foam or some kind of chemical and not put the firefighters at risk because of the high voltage, but apparently they trained the firefighters here in the Bay Area at the Tesla plant about three or four years ago, and they just spray water on them. Well, here's the guy yeah, who... But was it was it the water putting out the car oh, parts, or was it water putting out the the uh, battery? That's uh, yeah, I don't know. That's <laughs> the issue because the battery explodes, and I think you would need foam or something. Here's Brian Neary. He says he's not. How's a Trump doing? <laughs> hey, how about them cowboys? Oh man, sorry, Charlie. Yeah, there, there, is, the there he is. Cowboys lost this weekend, didn't they? Uh, they the cowboys. They, they described the difference between the Cowboys and the Eagles. The Cowboys fell off. Sorry, the Eagles fell off their bicycle, but the Eagles fell off the cliff. <laughs> the Cowboys fell off the cliff. Okay, I'm just trying to change the subject so we don't talk about Teslas for an hour. <laughs> well, well, no, but it, 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 it is a problem, isn't it, with Teslas, with uh, the electricity, uh, the uh, batteries getting oh. less efficient as it gets colder? I have no idea. It, it gets... Uh, well, like you own a goddamn here. Tesla for crying out I'm loud. I'm in California. We don't have those, we don't have those temperatures here. Yeah. I'm in California. I'm not where Charlie is. Hey, listen. Whoa, uh, sorry. Uh, we aren't where Charlie is. Listen, the way, well, the way things are going with global warming, event, uh, warming eventually you're going to be down in the teens, okay? I remember when I was growing up, I don't think I ever remember it getting colder than about 30 degrees in Marin County. Yeah, 32 degrees here, 34 degrees here, and everyone's posting pictures of that degree thingy on their car. Yeah, and we yeah. didn't get snow. What we got was frost. Yeah. You know. Uh, 64, it snowed, remember. I remember once it snowed out at Stinson Beach. Yeah, it snowed in Burlingame at six, in 1964. I remember that. Yeah. And, 53 and, or 64. And I was, I was thrilled because as a kid who grew up in California... Uh, the only time I had ever seen snow was when my parents took me up during the winter to Tahoe. Yep. Uh, and But we weren't in Tahoe most winters. We were there during the summer. Mm. But we went to a, a place to have dinner called the Christmas Tree, which is on the Mount Rose Road up yep. to the top of uh, uh, Mount Rose. And there's a place called the Christmas Tree. It's a great restaurant when I was a kid. And they, you ordered a steak. And I mean, those were the days when you ordered a steak and it was like this, you know. And delicious dinners and everything. And they had pictures on the wall of all the big snowfalls, you know, roads <laughs> being cut off and the, you know, the uh, like 90 high, feet high uh, snow drifts and things like that. But that's the most I ever saw of snow until I actually moved to places where there was snow. Uh, and I, I, I kind of got, I was thrilled by the first snowstorms that hit, you know. 
I came to New York, there were snowstorms, and I went, wonderful, I'm looking out the window. I don't have to go out there. But if I want to go out there, boy, I can make snowballs up and fight with people and, you know, have a really good I, time. I hear that Christmas tree uh, restaurant and now sells a steak that's 96 ounces. If you can eat the whole thing, they give you a Tesla. No. <laughs> bull. Bull, bull, bull. Bull. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks for bringing it back to Tesla's. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Well, he kind of he kind of worked it into stakes, okay? So you have to admit there was some attempt to keep going with the same trend that we were talking about. But uh, so you don't know a thing about Teslas, then? I know they charge and you know, drive them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not about the cold. Just not about the cold. Stuff. Do you but think? Actually, let me just you. ask you this: as a guy who is a big car guy, what do you have? You have you have like a I don't know, Maserati? What is that thing you own? <laughs> yeah, exactly. A uh, 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 what? <clears throat> it's a 1934 Cadillac. Oh, you're thinking of the McLaren. The McLaren. McLaren. And that's, yeah. a, that's an English Maserati, is what it. So means. if you were on my if you're on my Instagram, you'd see a funny reel I had. I had my McLaren, and my friend was backing up his McLaren, and the guy who does the voiceover says. And you're telling me that there's some people that think they're driving a Tesla to save the world or something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, here's the deal. No, no. I, I think Teslas are, are hybrids. Electric or hybrids are great for commuting. I'd love to have one to go back and forth to load up. Yeah. But you probably take a hybrid to a, to a Tesla, right? Yeah. Teslas are good. Because I take a hybrid because... I would be constantly oh. looking at the battery meter to see how low it's getting and getting angst because it's getting lower and lower. And will I be able to get home or should I charge it now? And I don't want to go through that. Yeah, yeah. But like when you when you, when you take it, like if I were to take it from here to Lodi and back, I come home and I plug it in and, and done. And then the next morning is ready to go. But I like the idea of the of the hybrid where as you go, you're charging the electric. Right. And then you go to the electric when you have enough power and you use that until it goes too low and then it switches back to the gas. I think that's the best possible idea, you know. Yep. Uh, more than yeah, a, I think I think Vernon or Vernon Nunn or um, Jeff, they have a hybrid. Maybe it's Jeff. I got but one. They have a hybrid. Jeff, Jeff has one. They, they really, really like the it. Prius. I got the Prius. Oh, you got the Prius? Oh, you have a Prius? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I'm, I know what you're going to say. Oh man, I it's my all daughter's. I say is when I'm driving the Lodi and I'm going up Ultima Pass, there's always some some Prius in like I'm, the fast in lane. The left trying lane. To go yeah, I'm like going the left lane guy. and they're sitting there going 60 miles an hour trying to save gas. Says, Get out of the way! Oh my god! Yeah, yeah I know. Your Europe is very good though. Europe is very good. When you're in the fast lane, you're in the fast lane. Oh God, are you in the fast lane? Yeah, because they, oh, yeah. they, they, they have a law, right? That you cannot it's, pass to the right of people. Well, that's the same here. No, no, the People law. Don't know the, it. The law over there is there is a speed limit. There are speed limits on the road, but if you get in the passing lane, which is the one furthest to the left, okay, you can go as fast as you want as long as you're passing people. So people yeah. just vroom, they're just passing the everybody. Autobahn. And yeah. I, I would, I would I get in that, that lane, and sometimes I would have to move over because these people were just, they were crazy. They were crazy nuts on those roads over there. In worst of all, in Germany, yep. because they have the autobahns over there, and yep. there's no speed limit. This goes fast as you can get away with it, and if somebody is coming up behind you and they want to pass you, you move over into the other lane. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, I had to rent it a BMW and drove through Italy, and. Uh, Oh, they're yeah, nuts, I'm, too. I'm cruising the fast lane, man. Some Mercedes just flying up on me, man. You get out of the way quick. Yeah, but I've, I had ca cars passing me at over 100 miles an hour. Sure. You know. Why not? Well, you can go as fast as you want to in that lane as long as you're passing somebody. Yeah, and then you drive a couple miles and you pull over in Italy and you get a little espresso and then you, bam, you're back to 100 miles but an hour. <laughs> every, every now and then, tell me if this isn't true, in Italy, you will pass a certain part of the road where there's a memorial. Mm. Mm. Kind of like California. No, no. When people when people die in a car crash, they yeah. set up a little memorial for them right where they had the crash. Yep. Yeah, they they're do all that over here, here now. Yeah. They're out yeah, here. Really? Yeah. 
They do it in California for highway patrol officers that are killed in line of duty in a certain stretch of freeway. They they name that stretch. Well, of freeway. they name them. They name the stretch after them. But what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, what do you call it? The, yeah, they uh, build the a candles. cross. They put candles, candles and flowers yeah. and everything. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Big, big like memorials that have the glass enclosed. Jesus. Oh, you I've know? seen them with the LED lights and everything. There's one yeah. right on 101 oh, there. Oh, really? It's got LED lights and the whole bit. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot. Gee, I'm surprised. Went that... down the street and I asked the kids what happened if they knew, and there was a palm tree and it was all black all the way up, and then they started setting a memorial up there, and yeah, some kid. Some kids stole a car, and then there's other, and they they ran down the, <clears throat> it's probably like thirty five miles an hour down here, from a flying down there, and they hit the they hit the uh, palm tree, and then burst up into flames. But there's a memorial because you know, oh poor kids that were going ninety miles yeah. an hour and acting yeah. stupid in a stolen car. Yeah, poor kids. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> Well, all I know is that uh, driving Four in three. Europe, driving in Europe was I had to I had to get used to it. It was terrorized. It was you get terrified for about the first couple of hours until mm. you just get with the program and realize if somebody's coming up right on your tail, you just move over into the other lane, let the guy go by, and they'll flash their lights at you. By the way, that's part of the deal. They got to flash their lights at you, and you flash their they flash their lights at you, and you get over in the other. And they're going like 120 miles an hour. Uh, so I drive yeah, my I got, Prius like I, that. Yeah. <laughs> Downhill. <laughs> hey. In a breeze. I run I, that I, thing. I, I run that thing I, at 80 miles an hour, no problem. I worked in Sweden for a week, and then I went down to Italy. So I flew into Milan, and it was just the sun was just setting, coming in. And I got my rental car, and I was supposed to go to uh, the lake there, and I had a hotel there. And I went down the... Got the car and I went to a the toll gate, you know, because there you have to pay for, you know, you go on the freeway and you take a ticket wherever you come off, you pay it. Yeah. I didn't know that. Right. And somehow I got in there when the thing was up and I cruised through and I didn't know. And then I went and when I need the exit and I go there and the guy is speaking Italian to me. I know what the hell he's saying. <laughs> he's asking me for the ticket. I put, uh, you and didn't take you like, didn't take the ticket out of the machine. No, so oh. I didn't know what was going on, <laughs> and I just like give him a bunch of money, and he just took what, what, he, what they he do. Probably took, stupid American took no, a couple what, what they then. do is they charge you for the furthest point, mm -hmm. yeah, from that turnoff, because mm -hmm. they don't know where you got on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what they did, but yeah, they like just the toll roads in the uh, but, in in Pennsylvania and stuff like that. Well, mm -hmm. They got the yeah. toll roads, but they, you know, it used to be when they built the original toll ro roads here. The, the idea behind them was you could go as fast as you wanted to. There was no speed limit. Uh, well, a few accidents later, they decided yeah. to put in speed limits. Right. But the, the idea was no speed limit you, because you were paying to use the road. Now you're just paying to <laughs> use the road. Yeah. Yep. All the, all the taxes in California, you're paying to use the road. Yeah. They use it in Italy, and those, and those freeways are clean, spotless. Oh yeah, just like you go, you go. Then you spend a week there, and then I came back here and freaking mattresses on one hundred and one oh, and six eighty yeah. and stupid. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, this place sucks. All the tire <laughs> treads from the big rigs that have been recapped yeah. sitting really? on the freeway. Yep. All Kevin's buddies. They call them gators. 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 Uh, gators. Mm. gators. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the speed limit in West Texas is eighty five miles an hour. So as you see people doing 100 miles an hour all the time out in West Texas. 90 if you have a Tesla. <laughs> 100 if you have a gun rack. Yeah, really? Everybody's got a gun rack. Even the Tesla has a gun rack. 120 if you have no sense at all. Yeah. I mean, you could, you, you could never get me to travel that fast. I mean, I just, you know, and I own some, I own, you know, like I had a Nissan... 300Z, how powerful were those? They were, they were pretty, it was pretty damn powerful. Uh, I had 110 in my Malibu. I had a Mazda RX-7, which I love that. I love the engine. Well, you that know, was in uh, Arizona back last month. I, uh, rent, I rented a car and they gave away my car, so they gave me a 23 Dodge Charger with a 345 ooh, in it. Wow. Oh, yeah. All of a oh, sudden, yeah. we were, we drove down to Tucson from uh, Phoenix, and all of a sudden, I'm looking down. And I go to my wife. I go, "Hey, we're doing 100 miles an hour." <laughs> I didn't even I know had it. That, I had that happen in Europe. 
because yeah. you forget said, about let's how see fa- what 120 feels like. <laughs> <laughs> you feel no, but you're pretty you're, smooth. You're driving down the highway. People are going fast and you're going 100 miles an hour and you don't even know it until I look down at the speedometer and I went, shit. Look you're in God. the desert and those people don't care out there. It's like yeah. wide open and they're just yeah. balls of the walls out there too. Well, also, they're straight roads. Yeah. Yeah, they're you straight. Know. The uh-huh. cool thing is when you're doing 100 or 120 and you get in an accident, you run into a tree or you're in a Prius and you hit a semi or something, there's, mm-hmm. they, they have to get out there and pick you up with a stick yeah, and a spoon. That, that's not good. But it, it, not good. it was really funny, you know, not funny really, but I'd be buzzing along at 85, 90 miles an hour and all of a sudden the cops sit right in the middle of the highway oh. and they sit there oh. with their guns, you know. Yep. And I'm yep. going, oh, shit. <laughs> I'll tell you, I went by one at 85 miles an hour and he never came for me. In Europe, the thing that drove me. I'm going, I'm going to get a ticket. In Europe, the thing that drove me. Looking at my mirror, nothing. Yeah. In Europe, the thing that drove me nuts was I would, in Italy, hit roads that had suddenly, uh, they built them going along the shore or something. I can't figure out how it was, but you would go and, oh, here's a tunnel. And you go through the tunnel. And you come out the other end of the tunnel, and you go, oh, sunlight. The next thing you know, you're in another tunnel. <clears throat> and then you get out of that tunnel, and then sunlight, and there's another tunnel, and another tunnel, and another tunnel. After a while, you're going loopy from going from daylight to darkness, from daylight to darkness. And I don't know why they built those that way. I mean, they couldn't they have built the road just slightly to the right, you know, and not had to have all those tunnels? No, we didn't have to move the mountain. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, right either that or just, uh, uh, one place I went, where was it? It was a thing called Mont Blanc, I think, in, uh, in uh, Italy, France. It's like between the two. And, and there's the Mont Blanc Tunnel. That thing goes forever. <laughs> and for a guy like me who's got claustrophobia, I was, that was driving me nuts, man. And I'm just driving and driving, and there's no... I, and you know how you always look? You can always see the end of the tunnel, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. driving towards... There is no end of the tunnel till there is an end of the tunnel. And this and thing, I so think... you're so relieved it, when you get there, aren't you? Uh, hold on a second. Uh, Echo, how long is the Mont Blanc Tunnel? The Mont Blanc Tunnel is 7.3 miles long. It is located in Regione Autonoma, Valle d'Aosta. It says 7.3 miles long. I could have sworn it was longer than that. That's pretty long, though. That's man. a long time. Pretty long. Yeah. That's like the San Mateo Bridge. Yeah, I was just going to say, the San Mateo Bridge is about that. Hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, I uh, uh, I, but I remember the Mont Blanc Tunnel. That, that was... Uh, and, and driving in a lot of different parts of Europe is just um, a, a real adventure. A real adventure. You know, and I, I. You know, if you were doing the speed limit instead of, you know, 25 miles an hour under the speed limit, you might have got through the tunnel quicker. Well, I think was there a speed limit in the tunnel? I think oh, there I was. Know. You know, and there were in the tunnel there were like these turnoffs and stuff where if you had to stop, you could stop. You oh know? wow! Uh, and uh, uh, and then, uh, then there were time there. places where you couldn't stop. It, it, it was really something, really mm-hmm. something, you know. And the thing I used to always, always used to drive me crazy was driving from Lake Tahoe back down to Sacramento. Mm-hmm. And the only way you could go faster because it was one lane until there was a passing lane. Now, I imagine mm, it's yeah, more yeah. now, but uh, until there was a passing lane, and you had to wait for the passing lanes before you could really speed up and get in front of a whole bunch of people, if they went over to the passing lane. Uh, so I remember that. That's why I called my, my auto, uh, audio biography Life in the Passing Lane. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah, that's where I got it from. I was just, mm-hmm. uh, but I mean, driving that and every, it was about every, how, how many, every so many miles was there a passing lane? Maybe two, three, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Then you get stuck behind the Prius. And I kept saying, why don't they just build two lane roads here? If they can build a passing lane, you know. But you know what? That, um, we just did that drive <clears throat> we did that to South Lake. Then we went up, you know, we t- spent the night, then we went up 
uh, Squaw Valley, then up to Reno, and then came down 80. Mm-hmm. You know, those roads now are very, very nice. They, you know, they just finished the whole re repaving of everything last couple of years. And those are nice, smooth. But you know what roads. I miss? What I miss? Uh, Donner Summit. Okay. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, Donner Summit, you would drive up to the top of Donner Summit. You could actually park the car and go out and sit on these big boulders that were up there. Yes. And yes. look up at the stars. You'll be out there at midnight looking up at the stars, and it was wonderful. All of a sudden, I go back to California once, and that road has disappeared. No, really? They just did a fast no. road getting out of there. And if you want no. to get to that part, I think you have to turn on off the road and whatever. Yeah, you and I, get off. I don't know where you do it or anything like that. But it was so nice. I I used to like take girlfriends up to Lake Tahoe, you know. A vista, isn't that what it's called? Where and and, and, and we we lay, lay on the rocks and just look up yeah. at the stars. And man, it was romantic. The Donner Party might have been there on those rocks. Yeah, that's oh. what. You well, eat each other up there. Uh, years ago, uh, Bobby Slayton got married. Uh, and when he got married. He decided to do it. He was working at Lake Tahoe. He was working at, uh, at uh, 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 where? what is it? The one on the South Shore. Not not Harris, the other thing. Uh, oh, They're God. all up there. No, Which well, one? Anyway. Nugget? No. Nugget? No, uh, no, no, no. The big hotel. Big, beautiful hotel up there. I, I can't remember anything anymore. Bunch of them up there, yeah. But anyway, out, out beside it, they had a field. And he decided... He wanted to get married out in that field. And it was winter. And he hired a sled, a big, huge sled that could hold like 20 people or whatever to get out there. And and then it was being taken around the field in the snow. And it was wonderful except for one thing. Everybody was freezing to death. In fact, the guy you know, um, running the horses, whatever you call that. Um, the guy running the horses, uh, his I noticed his mustache was getting frozen. Okay, that's how cold it was. And we are we're out there freezing our asses off. I think I even took a photograph of everybody sitting around all huddled up like this, you know. And uh, I referred to it at, after that point as the um, Donner wedding party. <laughs> <laughs> because it was so cold. I mean, it was just, it was ridiculous how cold it was. And uh, I mean, Could you hand me a hand over there to put the ring on my yeah. throat? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Break it off. Well, the, the funny part was... Uh, her name was, uh, what was it? It was, it, it, oh, God. Uh, I can't remember anything these days. But it, it was a very male name. What was it? It, it was... Uh, Bobby? It, no, no. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't Bobby. Uh, and it was, uh, it was, um, oh, God. I'm, Bobby and Alex, those are two girl and guy names. No, but Bobby. anyway, it was, her Alex. name sounded like a guy's name. And he said, which yeah. one is this one and which one is that yeah. one? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you know. Um, but I'll remember the name soon, but, you know. How when dare you? Huh? Samantha. What? Sam for Samantha? No, 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 no. Oh. This was actually a real kind of male name, you know, that sometimes goes both ways, you know. Oh, the girl's like, named Charlie. Or the, and there are guys mm-hmm. named, women named uh, yeah. Alex. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. um, he must. Uh, Tony must have another Charlie in his book because every time he he must when we chat, he always spells Charlie like Charlie C H R L E Y. Yeah, that's because he C H R L Y. C H R L Y. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, you know, I, I'll remember the name before the show's over. I'm sure. But you know, um, <laughs> Adrian. No, no, Adrian's a female's name. No, Adrian is a guy's name too. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it's, it's but an it, Italian. It, but I think French. it's. I think it's. Is you, how's your daughter's name spelled? Do you want to see? I just got a tattoo today. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> Did you really? Wow. Yeah, he's permanent. But it's so okay. So he loves that kid. I don't so have my, my mom. 
my mom my mom yeah my mom passed away when i was 13 and uh she had this writing you know it was just like sort of my friend who's a tattoo guy he has a tattoo shop and he says she was left-handed huh and my mom and i said i don't know i don't even know she was left-handed he goes no how she wrote her name she has her letters are angled so it's a left-handed Yep. And I said, wow. He goes, are you left-handed? I said, no, but my daughter, Adrian, she's left-handed also. Yeah, but now well, how, how is her name spelled? Right there. there okay, Adrian. So I'll spare my nipple. How's so that? Te- technically, it's Adrian, it, it, right? Yeah, it's still fresh, so it still has yeah, it. Yeah, it's A-D-R-I-E-N-N-E. Right, that's Adrian. The but the is, male name is Adrian. A-D-I, A-D. A-D, then it's like Brian. A D. yeah, R-I-A-N. Yeah. So. And my one of my best friend's name is Adrian as a guy. And so when I got when I said her name was Adrian, everyone thought that I was naming after my best friend. But no, look, I got to look this up because I can't remember her name, and I'll probably remember it even before. Okay, there's a picture of Bobby Slayton. Um, and it was Bobby okay. Jeffrey. Okay, I just got it. Oh. I just got it here. Her name was Teddy. Uh, uh, and I remember guy you who, talking about Bobby and Teddy. Yeah. And, the, yeah. and the guy who was marrying them said, Bobby, Teddy, oh. which one's Bobby and which one's Teddy? <laughs> and we all had a good laugh on that one, you know. But, uh, oh, gee, 68 years old. God, his wife is dead now for since uh, when? Uh, that was a strange one, man. That really was. 1980, uh, uh, 2016. Mm. Yeah. God, was it that long ago? Yeah. Yeah. 2016. But, you know, uh, I always felt really bad about that one because, you know, it was, it was horrible. And he, he, he has a girlfriend. He's had a girlfriend for quite a while. And uh, her husband had died about mm. the same time. And they uh-huh. found each other within about a year of each of those deaths. And they've had a wonderful relationship ever since. Terrific. Really terrific. Um, but anyway, Bobby, Teddy. Which one's Bobby? Which one's Teddy? That's it. I'm, I, 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 you know, it's bothering me I can't remember stuff anymore. How many of you are losing your memory? Oh, a long time ago. Really? Yeah. In other words, well, things like that you find it hard to remember even though it was something that just came... Right, yeah. Right, it came to you. Wow. So where is Tiffany's name tattooed to you? Yeah. <laughs> who are you? Who are you talking to? Brian. To Brian. Brian. That's Wife bad luck. Me. So I heard the Teslas are having problems in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this, is this a joke I don't get here about Tiffany? No, he's got his daughter's name tattooed, but he doesn't have her mother's name tattooed. Oh, I see. Okay. That, that, right. That's what I asked. Where's the mother's name's tattoo at? Did, by the way, did you show it to Adrian? Oh, Adrian was there when I got it done. Oh, oh really? Oh, boy. Yeah. Someone's really giving her a big head. Boy, is that, this is getting kinky. She kept yeah. telling me to put my shirt on and cover my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to keep my shirt on? How's he going to do the tattoo? I he, didn't put he, tape was, over him. he was upset that her nip. No, I won't yeah. say well, Bobby, that. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby, please, no jokes. Though. Slayton has tattoos, some fairly mm. significant tattoos, but one of the ones he did have was Natasha, which was his daughter's name. Mm. You know, a lot of parents have a tendency to do that. You know, the reason you do that, especially, is because. It's something you're never going to regret. Yeah. Right. You know, you may someday come to regret that. What is it? A Cadillac logo you have on your arm? <laughs> no, mm. I won't. But I say, I always said the reason why I never got tattoos before because I probably would have Van Halen across my chest. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I've never gotten a tattoo. I do have. I actually have four tattoos. Oh, well, they were the they were the dots yeah. they put on me for the radiation. And they put, make these make these little tattoos, uh, and I've never lo- I haven't looked recently to see them, but they're still there, and uh, I will always have them. And I told them when they did it, I said, "Well, I guess I could never be buried in a Jewish cemetery." And uh, they said, "Well, we've talked to rabbis about this, and because it's for your health, it's okay." So, yeah, I can there's s- another tattoo that you can have. Adrian, she has such a great sense of humor. 
She says, when you get older, we're going to put a tattoo. If lost, please return and then have my phone number. On there. <laughs> Did Adrian say that? <laughs> yeah. Just wow. Get a barcode. She is yeah. funny. Get a barcode like the cats do, you know. I get a barcode. Yeah. yeah, you can do a barcode or one of those. Get a, Be a little better. Get one of those square things with all the ziggy zag stuffs inside of them. QR code, yeah. It's like they yeah. inject yeah. into QR an animal. Code. They can scan you. Yeah. yeah. Buster, I'm glad I never got that Dallas Cowboy tattoo. <laughs> I got Super Bowl champs at the beginning of the season. Oh, Nobody. so I got to show you something, guys. That's happened. That I got to show happened. you something. Yeah, the Cowboy guy, there's that one. You ready for this? Alex mm -hmm. has got a new tooth. Oh, he got your tooth. Yeah. Hey, he, 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 there's my five thousand yeah, dollar tooth. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, would he have a five year payment plan on it? Well, no. <laughs> no, I'm paying for the whole damn thing. We have insurance and stuff, you know, but I'm and I'm paying for the whole damn thing. Uh, but I, because I I I if it were all the way in the back, I'd say hell with it. You know, waste of time. But there, it's kind of cosme It's cosmetic. You know, and uh, I know I'm, I'm probably not going to live long enough to get my money's worth out of it. But, you know, um, these things. What, is, your, what huh? is living long enough in your money's worth? It was worthwhile getting to you. And if you well, live I, five years with it, that's great. And if I you mean, live another 20 years, that's great. I, there were two reasons I got it. Number one, cosmetically. So, you know, I don't want to look like I'm voting for Trump. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and the other reason was that it was in a place where when I was eating, food would get stuck up in it, you know, or go up in it and irritate it and so on. And I just wanted to have a tooth there. But if it were all the way in the back, I would have done nothing about it, you know. You could have the name Tesla engraved across it. Right, exactly. Uh, and then, so then, here's what happens. I go in yesterday, to, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was Tuesday. I went in yesterday to get the tooth installed. I guess that's what you call it, you know. Yeah, sure. And um, he takes, uh, does the whole thing, and you know, and he grinds it down so that it's just right and all of that, and it puts it in there. I asked him if it was glued in, and it's not glued in; it's screwed in. Yeah. But I, but how do they screw it in? Do they turn the whole tooth or something, or? No, they didn't no. spin you around. I don't know, but it supposedly he screwed it in. Uh, uh -huh. And when he got finished with that, no, he, no something's what? No, no, no. He didn't screw the tooth in. He, 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 oh, he, I know the that. post, the post is screwed in. Yeah, we no, went the, through this. The post is screwed in, but the 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 um, tooth is then ho they hooked on to that because it's like a post. Like so when you put like, it when like, you put in a, a phony tooth, you know, you they 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 drive in a a post and then the post. Then they go out and they get the, you know, the, um, what do you call it? The, they uh, screw it in and there's a post at the other end. There's a screw at one end, a post at the other. They screw it in. Well, they, no, no, the, no the, the thing is, the implant is what the tooth supposedly <laughs> oh, okay. screws onto. I mean, the, the, po the implant screws into the jaw, okay? Okay. And then and when you get the tooth, the tooth is then... The, the post is that the tooth is then adhered to the post, which is part of the uh, implant. Kind of okay. like a crown. Yeah, like a crown, oh, no. but they don't use glue. Huh. I went, what? You Maybe know. pressure, just the you pressure. Know, is there and, a doctor, and they, is there a doctor watching no, this? Please and every, and all, every time I go to the dentist, it's a new way of doing things. Uh, the first time I ever got this uh, a tooth implant, it took them six months to do it. Okay, the whole process took about six That's months. That's a lot of screwing. Now it took now it took just a little over three months, you know. It's it's uh, oh excuse me a little over two months. So I mean it's incredible. And what they did, and I I think I mentioned this last week, they you know how they normally they take a, a you know a, a, a mold of your teeth of your you know, impression impression yeah you they put it in that gooey stuff and then you sit there for a half an hour until it sets and then they take it out and then they make a phony set of teeth and send it out so they can then figure out how to make the how big how to big to make the uh, uh the yeah. fake tooth they don't do that anymore 
exactly. I had this, uh, this, this assistant of his go into my mouth with this probe and just scan every tooth in my mouth. And when she was through, I said, what were you doing? And she says, well, look. And on the screen was a three-dimensional impression of my mouth, of my teeth. And that's what they send off to the place to do my, the mold. I mean, it's amazing. It's just amazing. It's all changed, you know. So I, I enjoyed that. That was fun. Uh, listen, we, 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 ha we, I guess we, could, we haven't talked about politics tonight. Nope. Uh, something we're all probably terribly sick of already, you know. Uh, but uh, how about that blowout election for Trump, huh, in Iowa, man? Oh, so God. surprising, so surprising. Yeah, everybody who has run and gotten the, uh, won the Iowa caucus yeah. in the last uh, three times, I think, uh, has not wound up going to the uh, nomination. The really? You know, you had wow. uh, you had Cruz and you had Huckabee and who was there? There's one other. I can't remember who now. And uh, 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 you know, it, it, it's, no, it, it's no big deal. And everybody, oh, oh, it, it, he's getting on the way now. He's getting there. You know, it's not anywhere. I mean, nothing. You don't know what's going to happen along the line. So. What happens? He uh, he. What, what happened to Trump? He was out out of the running last time, uh, rather in 2016, 16, yeah. when he uh, until he got to where? To South Carolina. South Carolina, and they won South Carolina, and that gave him the momentum. Well, I don't know what's going to happen in South Carolina this time because who's from South Carolina? Nick Nikki Nikki Haley. Nick Haley. Yeah, yeah so, Nick, I mean, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, but. Hopefully he, she wins and he doesn't. Hmm? Hopefully she wins yeah. the nomination and he doesn't. Well, I could, you know, if, uh, we, we're we all, I guess, liberals here, pretty much, except for Brian, who's a raging conservative. Um <laughs> Uh, but how many of you could live with Nikki Haley as president? Not right? me. Well, you couldn't. Well, you're you're a hardliner that way. I mean, I, let's face I think it. If she's I'm the most qualified, huh? I think she's the most qualified. She's probably, all the probably the most qualified. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I I I wouldn't feel comfortable with her because I don't like her politics. But. Exactly. At that least he, she seems to be an honest human being, which is something that would be refreshing for a Republican or a politician. Yeah, the, the last the last three Iowa caucus winners. Yeah, they said they have a checkered past. So Ted Cruz's last time, 2016, 2012 was Rick Santorum. Yes, right. Yeah, and then Huckabee. Yeah, and then 2096. You know, Bob Dole and George W. Bush. But then before that, 1988. Bob Dole, he won it, but the eventual nominee was George H. W. Bush. Yeah. And then H. W. Bush was 1980 winner of Iowa caucus, but then Ronald Reagan was the nominee. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it doesn't it doesn't mean shit to a tree. Five I mean, out of it, yeah, five out of seven times the last five out of seven times it hasn't hasn't worked out. And they make a big right. deal out of it. Oh, the Iowa caucus, blah, 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 blah. and it's just like, yeah, come on, quit. Quit jerking me off, MSNBC. What? I don't need this. Who cares well, about Iowa and, anyhow? Well, you know? next week is yeah. New Hampshire, and I think that that maybe will mean more. You know, Nikki I, Haley's tied with Trump in New Hampshire. Yes. Yes. right now tied. Yes. They're yes. neck and neck, right there. Well, yep. be good right if she now. could beat him. Yeah, you know, take away his bragging rights. You know, they let everybody in on that one. Yeah, but we don't know if he's going to be able to campaign for it because he may have court dates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was complaining about how he couldn't go to a funeral today. Problem but, is, he didn't have to be in court. He could have gone to the funeral. He didn't have to go there because yeah. uh, you know. Oh no, but I wouldn't miss my court date for anything. His <laughs> guilt is his guilt is already. I'm just gonna sit here and make it make a big deal out of it. That's all. His, his guilt has already been assumed. You know, it's just a matter of what the <laughs> amount of money is he's going to have to pay to E. Jean Carroll or whatever her name is. Uh, oh yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that, that he's, he's uh, uh, you know, and, and again, 
you know, change your act now and then. He suddenly <laughs> goes after the judge. Yeah. You know? I mean, come on. It, 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 are all judges terrible? <laughs> you know? Well, bullies got a bully. Bullies have to bully. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. True. You know. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, and of course, I of course the judge who, you know, was his in his, in the other trial, the fraud trial, which we're still waiting for the decision on that. Yeah. Uh, the fraud trial um, was the guy who uh, just recently ch charged me another forty two hundred dollars. <laughs> so. Well, he's not getting it out of Trump, so he's got to get it. Yeah, well, you, right, right. Uh, well, we're not fighting it. We're just going to pay it, and then we're going to turn around and sue the guy for the uh, the security deposit, which we can get like three times what the security deposit is. He's got to pay interest on that? No, it's not interest. Oh, it's wow. not interest. There's a rule here that if within two, month, two weeks uh, after uh, he should give us back our security deposit he hasn't and he hasn't met certain criteria you know like he didn't complain that there was no reason why he wasn't paying it he just wasn't paying it and he kept kicking the can down the road huh. that if that's the case uh, there's double damages in on top of getting the forty two hundred dollars back so it'll be about wow. twelve thousand dollars he'll owe us and we're going after him what the hell why not <laughs> You know, Good. you got nothing else to do. Well, I have nothing else to do, and I don't want to. I don't want this guy has ripped us off from the very beginning, and yeah. I don't want to let it. I don't. He's gotten away with an awful lot because he was a goddamn basketball player, and the judge was just felt you know wonderful about that. Oh, you're that base basketball player who was with the Knicks back in blah blah blah. I mean, the guy was only with the Knicks for like two years, okay, and. uh um, I, I, you know, I, I said to Marjorie, I said, you know, really, if, if in New York you were to ask people back then about this guy and Alex Bennett, more people knew who I was than knew who this guy was because he wasn't a very important player for the Knicks. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, you know, I, I, but he was, imp I think he was impressed by that. So that was a game advantage for the basketball player. Gee, I should have learned to play basketball. You know, mm -hmm. then I could go, then I, then I could go around ripping people off. You know, so I can say that because I haven't said the name of the guy here. Mm -hmm. I know you're all looking through the history books to see basketball players in New York. We uh, already did that one night. I already uh, looked it up. Uh, yeah. uh, Tony tried. I did. Remember, we did that that night. Yeah. Did you Did you figure it out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, we We uh, found this whole history. Oh really? Oh you yeah. did. Well, we did it that night on. Was it maybe it was Saturday night? I don't remember, but we did that that night. Oh, this was maybe on a Saturday night when nobody was yeah, listening to it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, and and the history was it was like about two years as a Nick. And, yeah. And he, he went over to another. He was on a couple other teams too. Yeah, yeah. And then he went to he went to Europe to play. Yeah. That's where you Europe. go when you can't be successful here. Exactly. You know. So. And meanwhile, I was on the air here on radio for how many years? Uh, almost 10 years. You know, so well, I lasted yeah. longer on radio than he lasted at the Knicks. So, so Brian, are you going to buy the latest blanket for your battery pack on your Tesla? No, but you guys are right. Them, even the McLaren, the they have one. It's called P1. It's like a total race car, but it's a hybrid. And there's one that this they lost in one of the big floods last year. Or a couple of years ago, I guess, and the, this one guy bought it, and they took the battery pack out of there. Mm -hmm. They took all that apart, and there are these round batteries that they that is in that thing. I don't know how many of those, but they're these round, like look like little canister battery. Yeah, yeah. and um, I saw it that when you say they're batteries like hooked up in series. Yeah, that's how that's how that thing. Yeah, so it, it actually is something like that. Hey, Alex, when you, when you got your your Emmy, did what is that regular Emmy? I mean, was that like in the um, was that one just like they just oh, by the way, here you got this, or was this a ceremony? Or yeah, what? it was a ceremony. Oh, yeah, oh, really? In San Francisco, yeah, they're smaller Emmys, they're they're about ha half the size of the ones that you see on the award show for national, 
but yeah. it's an Emmy nonetheless. Mm. Uh, yeah. And and um, there, how it was voted upon was all the people who uh, say were contestants or in the in the San Francisco Bay Area. It wasn't voted by anybody in the Bay Area. It was sent up to, I think, in that case, like Oregon or someplace like that, mm-hmm. to up there, and then they had the people up there listen to all the programs and vote on them. Oh, so, right. so they, you know, it wasn't like Alex Bennett's really popular in San Francisco, but that doesn't mean shit to a tree in the Emmys, in those local Emmys, because they do the local Emmy by sending the voting to somewhere else. Hmm. So that if somebody's really so popular, they're not biased. Yeah, it's not based on popularity. Okay. Yeah. So I felt good about winning those, you know, uh, especially the one I won for an a, a information show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was very proud of winning that one. The sports one, I I did that with a lot of other people. I mean, I joke about it being a sports Emmy, which it is. But I did it with a bunch of other people. The program itself that we were on won the Emmy, so every one of us got an Emmy for doing that show. Awesome. But meanwhile, I watched the Emmys this year, and what a boring goddamn show that was, (laughs) you know? Yeah, I I recorded it, and I started going through it, and I couldn't. And then I, I also did the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I started going through that. That was really entertaining. That was entertaining? Yeah, because they always had, you know, they have, like, somebody out there, and they have some people singing their songs and stuff like that. So it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, was Paul Schaefer running the orchestra? Uh, I don't remember. They had the Spinners were inducted, Shaka Khan, Willie Nelson. It was, good, it was a good group. Isn't that pronounced Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan? Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. <laughs> Oh man, I'm telling you that. Uh, but the, it it got the lowest ratings of any Emmy Awards show in history, because wow. it was opposite the Iowa elections, and it was opposite. There was one other thing. There was um, was there some sports event? Oh, Monday night. Mm-hmm. It was Monday night. Yeah. Yeah, it was the it was two finale football. of the Eagles season. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh, I, uh, also, yeah. I understand Texas is not going to the Super Bowl either. <laughs> I'm going to laugh so hard if the if the Niners lose. Oh no, they're going to win. I ain't saying wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's going to the uh going to the the uh, no, Super Bowl? No. <laughs> the first round of the playoffs, the San Francisco or is number 1 so they get one bye so they don't have to play. So all the other real teams had to, you know, we, tough it you out. don't know who's going to the Super Bowl yet? No, no, not at all. Not at all. The playoffs for. But there, there's one meme there's a guy Oh, Kevin left. There's one meme there's a guy. I'm not gone. He's, a, he's not saying anything. Uh-oh. <laughs> there's uh there's one guy and he's really serious and he says, No, he says this is done months ago. But he says, Yeah, you know what? Dak Prescott, he's the quarterback. That's the guy who throws the ball. Okay, he says uh, he can take he can actually take the team to the Super Bowl. And then he started going travel, tickets, and how many people in his pay he see. He could take the Dallas Cowboys to the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I wish I could get the joke. Uh, but uh, San Francisco's yeah. still in the, the run. The joke is the Cowboys every year go to the playoffs and lose in the first round. Really? <laughs> That's what the there, joke is. <laughs> there's a cycle. <laughs> well, you know, don't... It, it's, lot, it's fun. I'll tell it's you, uh, just quickly, don't ever put down a losing team because... The Mets here in New York, when they first started, lost every year. They they, they were a team, and they got, they had a gigantic amount of people going to every game because everybody wanted to root for a loser, you know? They always wanted to have hope and dreams and so on. And finally, they won the World Series. They took the pennant and won the series. And nobody turned out for the games any longer. So maybe it's better if you keep losing. Trump like is the cer- Cubs. Yeah, well, Trump has proven <laughs> yeah. that, you know. Anyway, hey, listen, we got to go here. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, uh, Alan. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Brian. A very fun couple hours here, an hour, or whatever it was. It was an hour. And uh, thank you for all being here. Would you all uh, wave goodbye? And I'll wave goodbye at you. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
Uh, I'm going as well. You've got, uh, let's see here, Amy Manuel is next. She's here with The Intersection, a fine show. She's really entertaining, and the show is entertaining, and I'm very happy that she's been doing it lately because uh, uh, she just really surprised the hell out of me, and I'm glad about it, and I just congratulate her for doing an excellent, excellent show. Anyway, she's next. She'll take your calls at, uh, let's see here, at... Uh, at uh, Gabnet Live on Skype, all right? I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. <laughs>